You know, in the words of Whitney Houston, it's not right, but it's okay. Hi friends. So I'm in the middle of making this rug for a client. And if you wanna know how I make rugs, I've actually uploaded a video to my channel going through the entire process. And while I was making this, I actually had a weird idea that it would be good to turn this motif into a bag. So I've been looking at Instagram for a while and I've been seeing a few bags. There's these chest rigged mini bags that a lot of the guys have been wearing, which I've really been liking. One of the big brands that have popularized it is Jacques Mousse, if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> and also I've seen some really nice ones from Prada and some other brands. And also in the past, I've customized a few bags and they were really well received, but I always thought to myself, I wanna be able to make these sort of bags from scratch because the one that I use is from a brand called Jaded London. It's a really nice brand. I found that their silhouette is very similar to the Dior bag and I kind of I wanna do something that's got a bit more of my signature to it, which kind of leads me to a point about creativity. I find that creativity and having a style is a journey and not a destination. It's about all of the evolutions and slight changes that you have going along the way. So for example, hopefully at the end of this video, if this goes well, cause I've never made a bag before, I'll have a bag that's inspired by a rug. Soon that will turn into another project and another project. And obviously if you know the footsteps then you'd know how we got there. Ideas don't just like pop up out of nowhere. I think that they come from lots of incremental changes that accumulate over time into something great. This is an exploded diagram of how I envisioned the bag to be. It will start off with a lid which is based on the rug. I've colored it in this nice brown and orange. Then we're gonna have the inside of the bag. It's gonna have a zip and it's gonna be a full carry case with an orange contrast stitch just to match it with the lid. And it's also gonna slot into some flaps that are gonna come out on the sides to give us just a little bit of extra storage on the inside. This is sketches that I've done. The images are hard to figure out, but they correspond with parts of the bag. So this is the inside body. And right now we're just gonna turn that into a vector. So I'm gonna select the shape tool and do a rectangle. The measurements are 11 centimeters by 26 centimeters. I'm gonna click again to make another shape. And this time I'm gonna make a square which is one centimeter by one centimeter. If I press V, I get my selection tool and I can select both of these. Go to my alignment and press buttons to make sure that it aligns perfectly to where I want it to go. Next I can Command C and then Command V to copy and paste. And then once again, use my alignment tools to get everything in place. Next, I wanna make another rectangle. This time, it's gonna be one centimetre by 1.2 centimetres. And align to the center. And I'm just gonna drag it out so it meets the two squares. Which now I can get rid of. This shape is gonna be where the zip goes. So now I'm gonna select the circle tool and do 1.2 by 1.2. Dragging it over to the edges. Once again, copy and paste, so I have it on both sides. And then reshape the rectangle. Now I can go to my pathfinder and it will turn it into one cohesive shape. Now it's starting to look a lot more like a reasonable looking version of what I was going for and I use those same principles to make the rest of the pattern for the bag. All that's left to do now is print this off, cut it out so I can use it to make the shapes on the leather. So these are the two types of leather that I'm gonna be using for this project, chrome tan leather and veggie tan leather. So starting with chrome tan leather, it's treated with oils and waxes, which is what makes it weather resistant and resistant to stains. The process of staining, it takes about a day, which is why it's good for mass production. It's also a lot cheaper than veggie tan leather and it's always soft. So with veggie tan leather, it starts out quite hard and it softens, but this is soft immediately. And I'm gonna be using this for the body of the bag and the inside. And we also have veg tan leather. So veg tan is a more environmentally friendly way of tanning leather. It uses wood and bark and the process of 
tanning veg tan leather takes about 40 to 60 days. It also means that it's more prone to stains, which is why I'm gonna use it for the elements that I'm gonna be painting. These are the paints that I'm gonna be using. The brand is called Angelus. If you've ever seen anyone do any sort of sneaker painting or any sort of paint tan leather, you're probably very accustomed to seeing these brand of paints. These are the brushes that I'm gonna use. They're from a brand called ZKSM and I bought them on Amazon. A big question from a lot of all of my other painting videos is what kind of brushes do I use? I literally just use whichever brush is suited size wise to the project that I wanna do. So the reason that I bought these, it's not because of the particular brand or you can see there's an interesting shape to this, I suppose to make it more ergonomic, but that wasn't really my concern. My only concern was the size of the tip. Close up on my crusty hands, just cause I need to show you this. Please don't worry too much about the make or brand or any of those things when it comes to brushes. I've printed off the design that I'm gonna use and I'm just gonna use my cutting knife to cut along the edges and cut out the inside bits to make a stencil that I can draw around. Always use a light pressure whenever you're using a cutting knife. Let the tools do the work for you. It's never a good idea to use too much pressure because you can always end up hurting yourself. This is a very long process and in the last video everyone was telling me why do you hate transfer paper? I'm just getting into transfer paper, I'm gonna start using it soon. So now I'm just gonna stick this down so I can draw around it. I'm gonna use a light graphite pencil. The marks don't need to be too deep. I only need to be able to see them enough so I can do the painting. Now that's done, I can remove the stencil. So I'm going in with the Angelus paint using very short deliberate strokes. Because this is such a detailed piece, I'm using these finer brushes. But when I say that it's not so much about the brush, what I mean is you have to move the brush with intention. So it's more about, do you know where the brush is gonna go before you put it down? Are you moving in an intentional direction? What's the pressure like? These are all things that you learn through actually painting. And it's not about the actual tools themselves. A lot of people think that you get the tool and then you become the things, but that's like saying that you buy a car and now you're a race car driver. Like you need to learn how to use things, how to use it in the right way, what way works for you. And the best thing you can do is just experiment. And now that that's all finished, we can move on to protecting the design. Now I've finished the painting, the last step is to apply some acrylic finisher. It bonds to the actual paint itself and it makes a seal which stops it from chipping and makes it easier for it to be water resistant and it stops the paint from wearing away. All I need to do is take a brush and then add just a thin layer. I'm gonna do two layers. Usually you're supposed to wait about 24 hours, but this YouTube video isn't gonna make itself, so we move. Because I'm making the bag, it's really important that we protect the paint so that it doesn't chip. A lot of people drop bags, you know, you're using them quite heavily. You wanna make sure that it lasts long. That's why we did this step. And also I had a lot of leather left over, so I decided to make two. You'll find out later on in this video, that was actually a great thing because I did make quite a big mistake. Like I said, this is the first bag that I've made. I decided to do this one in purple just because I really enjoy that color and it does really well on my Instagram. So I'm just gonna use some fabric scissors to cut this out. You can use a cutting knife, but I find that with rounded edges, it becomes a lot harder to use the cutting knife. I'll be using the cutting knife later on in the video, but for right now, we're using these scissors. It is quite tricky and you do have to be very careful, but it works quite well. This is the pattern all printed out. This is gonna change quite a bit throughout the video, but this is the basic idea of how I wanted the bag to be constructed. And now I can just put down my leather and we can get ready to cut. I'm just using a regular graphite pencil to make the mark. Because I'm using black leather, you're not gonna see the marks too clearly, but that's all right, because with a light amount of pressure, you're still gonna see the line that I'm gonna make. 
because of the softness of the leather, it's left a slight imprint. So even though you can't really see the graphite, you can see the mark that I've made. When you're cutting leather, it's really important that you're using a cork back ruler. These cuts are very important. If you make a mistake, then it can really mess up the end product. And obviously with leather work, you want it to look really pristine. With the cork, it stops it from moving. So it becomes a lot easier to do straight lines. I'm also going to be using a cutting knife. This is just a regular cutting knife. It comes with 10A blades. And the good thing is the pack comes with a lot of them. So you can literally, as soon as they break or they get dull, you can change them. Always use a sharp knife because with the dull ones, it becomes exceedingly easy to do sloppy line work. And there's nothing worse on leather than sloppy line work. So when you're cutting, you always want to make sure that the ruler is on the inside of where the pattern's going to be. So this is going to be a block that I'm going to be using to make the bag, which means that I want to make sure that the ruler is here. The reason that you do that is because if I'm cutting, the knife is being blocked by the ruler, so I can't go inside. But if I make a mistake and I go out a bit, then it goes on the scrap part of the leather rather than the inside of the bag. Because if I was doing the same thing here, then accidentally my hand went that way. I've ruined the piece. You also want to make sure you have an even pressure. So that's where the line starts. That's where it ends. So that's where my fingers are going to go. And you'll notice that there's a sound difference between when you've cut halfway through the leather and when you've cut all the way through. I'm going to do several cuts. Don't be afraid to use light pressure because it's better than using too much pressure. And then maybe you cut yourself or you cut too much of the leather. So this is what it sounds like when you've cut halfway through. So that's one cut. You'll notice how rough that sounded as I was going through it. And that one was completely smooth. And that means that I've gone all the way through. I've come to this part, which is a curved line, if you can see. And rather than use the cutting knife, because it can become quite hard to do multiple cuts without a ruler, I'm just gonna use the scissors because it's a lot easier. This is the glue that I'm using. It's honestly the first one that I found on Amazon. Um, it actually works quite well for this project. So if you do decide to get it, I would recommend, but I'm not sure if it is necessarily the best. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply it to both sides with the applicator, and then I'm gonna use the brush just to get it even all over. And I'm gonna do that on both of the textured sides of the leather. What this will do is when I stick it together, it will give it a smooth finish on both sides. I'm using a weighted roller to apply pressure. I got this off Amazon as well. You just simply roll it across until the glue starts to bind. It bonds very quickly, so you don't need to do too much of this, but it's just to make sure that it's properly stuck in on every level. This is the edge burnishing tool. It has a little blade on the inside. And what it does is it smooths out all of the sides of the design. You use light pressure just to go across and you do it across all of the edge and it just gives it a nice rounded finish. And it stops the edges from fraying, which can just give you a very poor quality finish to the leather, which is something that we want to avoid. It's quite difficult to use on corners, but if you just be a bit patient and move slowly, you'll get great results in the end. I'm gonna take a bit of water. I'm just going to run my finger across the edge and then I've got a small piece here of just regular canvas material and then I'm just going to rub across this line here. And then you can see just on the outside it's a little bit smoother. I've got my leather edge finisher here. Just dip this into the edge. There's about that much left. And then we're just going to run this across the edge. It was bound to happen and it finally did. <laughs> I think we've run into our first major hurdle. As you've just seen, I've actually attached the two pieces of leather together and the finish I'm actually super happy with. However, this is really hard to bend. So the leather that I've used, I believe it was about 1.8 millimeters thick, which in my opinion would have made a really nice sturdy bag and I think that's still what it's gonna do. But when you add them together, which obviously you have to to make sure that both sides are nice, it just becomes way too thick. And if I want to do that as a lid, like look at that, like that's just so thick. And I don't think it's necessarily going to work for what we want to do. I think the best thing to do 
is put this to the side. It's a good job that I actually painted too. So I can revisit this. It might be a case of maybe doing something long way so it opens up kind of like a door. But I don't know if I like that because this is so flat. I think it might look weird without having the 3D-ness of it bending. Really confused about what to do with this but it happens it's the first time I'm doing this I didn't really expect it all to go exactly how I wanted it to go but I'm sure that this can be salvaged I'm really happy with how this bit turned out and that's a positive thing I'm gonna work on the orange and brown line and hopefully I can figure out a way while I'm doing that to salvage this one okay so the plan now is to put a zip into this part because this is going to be the main body of the bag. I've got to give full homage to a channel called Quarter Leather. I've got their videos linked in the description. I actually learned this technique for adding a zip from them. Pretty much all of the techniques that I learned for this video, I learned from other YouTubers. So I've linked a lot of the videos that I've used down below. For the zip, I've got this long extended fabric of zips. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the amount of zip that I need. So I can see here, I need this much. I'm just gonna line it up to the edge. Just so you can see there, it's poking out. Give myself a little bit extra just in case I make a mistake. And then I need about that much left. So I'm just gonna take my white Posca pen and just mark out where I'm cutting. So I'm just gonna take my fabric scissors and I'm gonna cut the fabric part, obviously. <laughs> And I also have these wire cutters here, just simple wire cutters. I'm going to use them to cut the zip portion. And there we are, let's cut to length. I'm just going to take this little zip pull here and what I need to do is attach it onto the zip. So if I just pull this apart. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to insert it downwards. So this part here goes down on that. And then the same on the other side. And grab them both like that and just pull down like that and that's the zip connected it's not perfectly aligned but that's fine we can sort that out there that's why we got a bit of extra so when we have the zip all sorted it's gonna sit right in there like that what i'm going to do is i'm going to use thread to hold this together and to stop it from coming out. This part of the zip could just go underneath here, but when I do my thread around it, I wanna make sure that it catches both sides of this. So obviously this was made of two sides and I pulled it apart. I wanna make sure that the thread hits both sides, hits in the center so that the thread stops it from coming out and then goes out and I wanna do the same on the other side. What I wanna do now is I wanna mark out the line for the stitch. What I'm using here is some calipers and they're basically just gonna mark out a line that's gonna go all the way around here so I know where the stitch is to go. I want the line to be about halfway between the mark of the outside and the inside. So I'm just gonna use this part here and turn it to open them up. Yeah, I think that works. With a light pressure, I'm just gonna hold it onto the edge and then just go around and make a light mark on that side, another one on this side. Don't worry so much about the mark and if you do anything wrong because it's gonna be covered up by the stitches and the holes that you make anyway. I'm gonna go halfway and then link the line. Halfway, link the line, close up. I'm gonna go halfway, link it up, and then do the same over here. And there you go. I have my rough outline going around now. So the next thing that I wanna do is make the holes for the stitches. These fork looking thingies are called stitch and chisels and they're used to mark out where your stitch is gonna go and also make the holes to make it easier for the stitches to go through because obviously it's hard to push a needle through leather unless you're using a machine, but we're doing this by hand. They come in a variety of sizes, as you can see. We wanna use the largest one possible so that we can cover the most surface area. And then we only wanna use the smaller ones for detailed work and areas that we can't use the large ones for. So for this entire line here, I'm going to be using this one with six prongs. For around the edges, I'm going to be using the two. Imagine if I make six holes here. If I use four, the line's curved so it would hit off the curve. And if I use one, I wouldn't know if I'm doing the same distance around. So if I use the two, I can put this here and mark and then I can go in the last mark and then the next one and then keep doing that all the way around and then go back to my larger one and go across like that. This is the rubber mallet. It's really good because it doesn't damage the end of these, but it's also heavy enough so you can actually make the indentation that I need. I'm just gonna mark it out lightly. Like I said, I learned all these techniques from Corner Leather, so you really should watch his video because he actually knows what he's doing, I'm not sure about me. So I'm just gonna start at the very edge of where I made my mark and I'm just gonna go in with two taps just to make a little indent. So there's six marks here. I'm gonna go four marks in so that I'm making sure that I'm still going in a straight line. 
Okay, so now I've come to the corner like I said I would, and I'm gonna take the two. Just end it. Then now that I'm at my edge, I can just go back in again. Then once again, go in there with the two and doing the last little bit around. And so you can see all of the marks that I made line up pretty well with the outline that I drew. So I know it's gonna work. So I don't want this zip to be able to go underneath. So I need to make sure that I'm cutting off these teeth here just so that they end right here. So when that stitch goes over it, there's nowhere else for these teeth to be. So I'm just gonna mark out where I think that the stitch line is gonna be roughly. So it's gonna be probably about, lift that up about there and there. And then on this side, it's gonna be about here. Once I take my fabric scissors to where I made those marks. And then on this one, I'm just going to break these. I'll just make sure that it's a bit of security for the edge. And then on just this one, I'm gonna probably break just a couple of them back here. And just pull them out like that. Rather than use glue to stick it down, I'm gonna use tape just because the glue might come through this part and then that'll look really messy. And because I'm gonna use a stitch anyway, just to hold it in, it shouldn't need that much extra protection. Measure out the tape for as long as I need it. Just need it to go to the end. Stick that down. Peel off the paper side, eventually. <laughs> so turn this over and place it. Kind of a preview of how the zip's gonna look. Which is pretty nice. Now that that's finished, I'm actually gonna go in with my chisels again, and I'm actually gonna make these holes go all the way through to the opposite end so that I can actually get the stitches through. When I wanna do this, I'll have another spare, just scrap piece of leather that I can lay underneath it, and it stops it from damaging my cutting mat. This is a special wax thread that you can use a lighter to burn and it basically burns as if it's like wax, I guess. <laughs> What's good about it is, is it holds in to the leather really well. Also, it's quite limber and it lasts for a very, very long time. And it comes in this really nice color. Okay, so this is always the worst part for me. <laughs> it's so hard to do, I don't know why. But I'm gonna thread these needles. I've actually bought these special needles for leather and apparently they're easier to do, so. Let's see. oh my gosh, look at that. First try, mad. You're gonna do what's called a saddle stitch. So you're gonna stitch with two needles. You take the pointy end and then rather than making a loop, you go through the wax thread. Just like that. Pull it out like that. And then you grab the long end and just pull. And that makes the knot. And then you do that on both sides. And it's just one piece of string. So it all the way in the middle. So I've done that on both ends. To do the saddle stitch, I'm gonna start at this end because then I can do a loop around. So I'm gonna go in, see it goes in through where the zip is. And I'm gonna take the other one, and I'm gonna go through, pull that through, and then just put it tight so that's how that's gonna look and the stitch is gonna look like that going all the way through as well now if I turn this over I'm on both sides which is where I want to be so when I do the double stitch it's gonna go over this so I'm gonna go that direction which means that when I turn it over this thread is gonna go where this thread came out that's gonna go in there then out and then that's gonna make a line there and then this thread is gonna go in then out and it's gonna keep going all the way through in here and then it comes out of this it's a bit stiff because of the zip, but it will get easier as I go around. And then this goes in here, pull it out, and then there you go, that's the line. So what I wanna do now is I just wanna back stitch like you would on the machine. Go through there, and then that's locked in. Because this is wax thread, when I cut this, melt it down, and there we go. And that's pretty sturdy. So now continuing on with the steps that I've been doing already, I'm just gonna finish constructing the bag by applying glue, going across with my tools, sewing, and making sure that everything looks all aesthetic and nice. I'm gonna start attaching the elements all together and constructing the bag.
I want to add the magnetic clips. I'm going to take a white Posca pen and I'm going to use my cutting knife just to cut out the areas that I've marked. I'm going to push it in on one side and then the other side you add the backing. You can get all of these pieces of Amazon if you just type in magnetic clips. Push them down with my thumbs and I can glue this part onto the back of the line design. Another quick note about this edging tool. The reason that you really want to make sure that you do this is because edges can become very frayed over time so they can start bending. Whereas if you round it off, it won't do that. And obviously you just add the color with the paint like I did before. Make sure that when you're doing this, it's just a light pressure because you can start to damage some of the leather if you do it a bit too hard and the blade will do the work for you. Always let the tool do the work for you. So now I'm just going to construct the rest of the bag. I want to add a bottom to it so it doesn't fall out. And then the other side of the bag knits. We're going to just glue that onto the front of the bag so it closes properly. And I'm going to add acrylic chains as straps for the bag. So I think I've figured out enough to maybe bring this back into the situation. Having this flap here be double-sided and then having just the one piece of leather here, it made this quite weak, which means that it can bend over and fold. So I think the option that I have is I need to find a way to weaken this. So I thought what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a strip out of this just to the edge in the same shape that I did the zip part here. I'll do the bag exactly how I've done this, except it will have the hole there. So you'll also be able to unzip it from this side. Learning everything that I've learned from the first bag, I can now use that to apply to the second bag. And these are the final results. I'm so happy with how this turned out. Like it was actually kind of shaky in the middle there, but it did work out well. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for getting through all of this. I know it was very long. I hope you enjoyed watching and enjoy the rest of your day.